This video is sponsored by OWC. iOS 16 beta is officially out. And in this video, we're gonna go hands-on with some of the major features that this new update from Apple has to offer. Now, we already made a video surrounding the entirely new lock screen experience. And if you haven't checked that out, you can click here and check it out. Uh, but for a quick refresher, you can now totally customize the look of your lock screen and save multiple versions of your lock screen to switch between whenever you wanna change things up. So if you long press on your lock screen, you'll get the option to customize the current lock screen that you have set up or create a new one. And Apple has already loaded the menu with a bunch of different categories of interactive wallpapers. And again, I'd imagine this list will be more robust when third-party developers can get their hands on this. But right now we have a few limited options to choose from. And then once you find the interactive wallpaper that you might like, you can customize the typeface and color of the clock. You can add supported widgets and you can even link focus modes, which speaking of focus modes, that's our next featured update for iOS 16. As I just mentioned, you can now link focus modes as part of the new update to different lock screens. And with that, you can set up now different focus filters for applications so that info you might need for work will only show up when you have your work focus mode filter on, or if you have entertainment, your entertainment filter information will show up, etc. Notifications on lock screen in iOS 16 also got a pretty big overhaul. For starters, it takes up a lot less of your display so that you can kind of focus on your wallpaper and you know not have your lock screen bogged down with a bunch of notifications. In fact, notifications now roll in from the bottom and they stay grouped like that, but now you can sort of swipe up on that stack to see the rest of your notifications or swipe down to hide your notifications and it kind of hides right in between your flashlight and camera and it just says, however many notifications you have currently available to look at. These notifications are pretty nice and help reduce clutter so that you can still view other info that you might need on your new custom lock screen like widgets, for example. The home app also got a huge redesign and it looks entirely different with an updated layout that makes it so much easier to view and control your devices all on one screen. Your favorites and your rooms are all on the same main home tab and categories at the top give you quick access to things like lights, climate control, security products, and more. I think this looks so much better. And if you have some HomeKit cameras, you can now see at least four of them kind of in this grouped little four or two by two thumbnail view. And you kind of just get easy access to all of your cameras without having to go into a specific room or swipe between different favorites or whatever it might be. You can now just kind of get a quick glance at multiple cameras at once. Dictation has become a bit more useful and now you can dictate text in a message or document or really anywhere that you would generally dictate a message, but you can now switch between uh, voice and touch real easily. And the keyboard stays open now while you're dictating a message so that you can, in the process, go ahead and edit any mistakes that you might want to. And it also works well with dictating emojis too. The iOS 15 live text feature that lets the iPhone detect text in photos has now been expanded to video. So you can pause any video that you might be watching and you can then use copy and paste, look up and translate any text that you might see in the video and just select it like you normally would when using the live text feature for photos, just now on videos. With iCloud shared photo library, up to six family members can now share photos with one another seamlessly. Photos can be uploaded to the shared album automatically based on the parameters that you set. And you can even upload directly to the shared library from the camera app. So you're taking a photo in real time, you can toggle on the shared library icon and it'll automatically just send those pictures to your shared library. The Maps app now supports multiple stops. So now you can plan a trip like I'm doing here from say Cleveland to Disney World, which is a trip that I'll actually be making later this summer. But now I can see what things might be like when adding in our extra stops along the way, which is pretty helpful. And you can do this in CarPlay as well by asking Siri to add a stop. Mail apps got a few nice major upgrades that puts the app more in line with third-party mail apps. You can now undo mail so that the mail refrains from sending. You can mark emails for follow-up reminders so that you can remember to reach out to that person in the future. And you have the ability to schedule emails that can be sent at a later date. Mail now supports rich links and it will also alert you if you've mentioned an attachment but forgotten to add it. Also, the search engine in Mail has been improved greatly. Uh, and so these are just some really nice and much needed updates to the Mail app. And it's across all, you know, macOS, iPadOS, and iOS. 
Apple added this new visual lookup feature that lets you grab the subject of an image, isolate it from the background, and drag it onto another app. And it works automatically, and it works incredibly well for the fact that it's in a beta, and it's super easy to use. And you can use this in photos, Safari, screenshots, and more. I mean, it's absolutely wild. All you do is just long press on the subject of the image, and it immediately separates it from the background. And then you can just drag it and drop it into the new Word document that you might have up or a messages box, whatever the case may be. And this is something that like people would spend some time doing in Photoshop, isolating something from a background that Apple has somehow figured out a way to do with one tap, which is mind boggling. The Messages app got a huge boost in features with the ability to edit a text after it has been sent. You can also undo or delete the message entirely up to 15 minutes after a message was sent. And you can also mark a message as unread so that you can revisit it later. These are three things that everyone has wanted and three things that we just got randomly in iOS 16. And you can also use SharePlay with messages just like you can in FaceTime. So with SharePlay, you can watch a TV show or use an app alongside someone else. So you can communicate via the Messages app, you know, via text instead of a FaceTime call while watching content. All of these features are limited to iMessage and aren't available for SMS messages, so something to keep in mind there. In the Health app, there's a new feature for tracking medications, which is pretty nice for those who need to keep track of a lot of medicine. Uh, once you choose the desired medicine from the list, you can then add your schedule of when you need to take it. You can log whether you've taken a dose that day or not, and so many more options. And lastly, if you don't have an Apple Watch, you can now still use the fitness app in iOS 16 to track your steps and activity, getting an estimation of calories burned and a few other limited features with no Apple Watch required. Now, before we end today's video, I do wanna give you more information about today's sponsor, OWC. The OWC Mini Stack STX is a stackable storage solution and Thunderbolt Hub expansion for your Mac Mini or really any Mac. With a universal SATA hard drive SSD bay and an NVMe SSD slot, you can actually expand your mini storage capacity to gigantic proportions. Three Thunderbolt ports are enabled for you to connect millions of Thunderbolt USB and future USB 4 drives, displays, AV mixers, cameras and tablets, as well as desktop accessories like a keyboard, card reader or mouse. The Mini Stack STX is whisper quiet due to its internal heat sink and cooling fan. You can add over 200 times more storage to your Mac Mini and add RAID protection via soft RAID software. And of course, you're adding a mix of up to five Thunderbolt devices, three USB, and two displays. Even though this size perfectly for a Mac Mini, as I said before, you can use it with any Mac, even a PC or your iPad and Chromebooks. And so for more information about OWC in the Mini Stack STX, visit the link in the description down below. This has been Dan with MacDreamers. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.